Hi, I'm Kiana Rush, and this is a tutoring video for Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Tempe, Arizona. And today we're going to be talking about anticoagulant drugs. So these can be used during atrial fibrillation. Um, during that, there's turbulent blood flow in the atria. This is demonstrated in the image on the left. The atria will beat faster than the ventricles, and this can cause clots to form in the atria. If these leave the heart, they can dislodge in the coronary arteries and cause a myocardial infarction. They can go to the brain and cause a stroke. They could go to the bowel and cause bowel ischemia. They can be really dangerous in any part of the body. So treatment with anticoagulants can reduce damage following these incidents. And they can also be the standard treatment in patients with existing clotting disorders. It's good to know that oral contraceptive pills will increase the risk of having a clot so, um, so will hormone replacement therapy with estrogen and pregnancy as well because of the increased estrogen associated with pregnancy. The first drug we're going to learn this week is heparin. And I'm going to try to provide you with a mnemonic that will always bring you back to the things associated with this drug so it's easy for you. So heparin will irreversibly bind antithrombin-3, factor 10A, and thrombin. It can be used in all of these conditions. And one that's good to know is unstable angina. Often these patients will have a heart attack within three months and their chest pain isn't associated with exercise or any kind of physical activity. It just comes on suddenly. And these patients often will have myocardial infarctions. It's good to know that heparin does not cross the placenta, so it's okay to use in pregnancy. Heparin also has a P in it, if that helps you remember that it's okay in pregnancy. And remember, pregnancy, high estrogen, hypercoagulable state. So this is actually my mnemonic for heparin over here on the left. We're gonna go through it in just a minute. Heparin will be reversed via protamine, and it's monitored with an activated partial thromboplastin time, also known as APTT. Side effects include bleeding or low platelets or osteoporosis. So my mnemonic for heparin, if you recognize this little hippo down here, what movie is this from? Bonus points if you know. Fantasia, great movie. All right. So my mnemonic for heparin, which goes with the hippo from Fantasia. A pet, see that? A P T T, a pet. Pro, so that goes with Pro to me. We already have a pet, a p t t, hippo, hippo, <laughs> a pet pro hippo, and that reminds me of this professional ballet dancing hippo in Fantasia. A p t t, protamine, and heparin—they all go together. A pet pro hippo, and that is how I remember everything that goes with heparin. All right. That helps me separate warfarin. Warfarin, it inhibits vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Those are two, seven, nine, and 10. Memorize those. It can be useful to prevent thrombosis, pulmonary embolism. And this is the one that they'll use to prophylactically prevent those clotting issues associated with atrial fibrillation. It can be reversed with vitamin K. It's monitored with prothrombin time and international normalized ratio, also known as PTINR. Don't use warfarin in pregnancy. Side effects are bleeding, which can be reversed with giving the patient vitamin K, and thrombosis early in therapy due to protein C deficiency, and it's also a teratogen which means it will harm germ cells, which is definitely not good. It's good to know that foods that are high in vitamin K 
can actually interfere with these drugs. And that doesn't mean that your patient shouldn't be eating vitamin K. In nutrition, we learned that the patients should still try to eat foods with vitamin K, but they should try to space them out more and not consume too much vitamin K in one meal. Also, is vitamin K fat soluble, vitamin or water soluble? I'll let you review that one. So this is a few tips to remember warfarin. Don't send pregnant people to war, obviously, because it's contraindicated in pregnancy. This is where heparin can be used in pregnancy. And wars can be international. So to monitor patients on warfarin, you'll use PTINR, which is prothrombin time and international normalized ratio. So don't send pregnant, pe <laughs> pregnant people to war and wars can be international. Those are the two mnemonics to remember warfarin. Aspirin. So you're probably familiar with aspirin. Um, you'll see it on the shelves of the pharmacy. And I think a lot of people have taken this for pain before. It helps my pain, but um, I'm more of a fan of Arnica lately. It kind of depends on what type of pain I have, but aspirin's been useful in the past. Aspirin's a non-selective COX inhibitor. It makes less thromboxane A2 and prostacycline as a consequence. It can be useful in thrombosis, ischemic stroke, and TIA. A TIA is a transient ischemic attack, um, also known as a mini stroke. So those patients experience all the symptoms of a stroke, but they don't have any lasting effects associated with stroke. They can be used to prevent heart attacks in patients who have had a history of MI or a heart attack. And you've probably heard about people who have had a heart attack who take a baby aspirin. And I would just read the research on it and see how you feel about that long term. I mean, maybe it's helpful, but it's good to be educated on the subject too. So some side effects can actually be kind of serious for aspirin. They include nephrotoxicity, metabolic acidosis, hyperthermia, and coma. So I remember aspirin can cause acidosis by aspidosis, and that's a good side effect to know for aspirin that it causes metabolic acidosis. Also, if it's used in children, it can cause this syndrome called Rye syndrome. And I encourage you to look that up and get familiar with it as well. So you really should not give children high amounts of aspirin. Really avoid it if you can. Oh no, I've given you the answers. Well, here's some review questions with answers. So hopefully it's a great review. <laughs> What are the vitamin K dependent clotting factors? Two, seven, nine, and 10. And however you wanna remember that, maybe just like imagine it's a locker code or something, whatever helps you. What anticoagulant is reversed with vitamin K? Warfarin. How do you reverse a heparin overdose? Codamine. A pet pro hippo. Which anticoagulant is preferred in pregnancy? Heparin. What well known over the counter medication can be used to prevent MI in patients with a history of MI? Aspirin. And now thinking about it, I believe my mom was actually recommended to take a baby aspirin every day by her doctor. I'm not sure if she is, but. It definitely happens. So if you guys have any questions on anticoagulant drugs or any other Farm One related subjects, feel free to send me an email or reach out to any of the other tutors for help.